Abuelo in a Western. A stranger steps into our Florida room, glaring at Abuelo and me on the couch. He shoots a man in the gut, then spits. A real hombre, Abuelo says. The stranger speaks mostly with his eyes, his gun, shoots another man, punches another. He never misses or loses, unlike Abuelo who misses his farm, his only brother, and his Cuba, all lost to the revolution. The stranger meets a woman, pins her against a barrel. She pushes back, but then kisses him. He leaves her crying. He can have any woman he wants, but he doesn't need a woman. Unlike Abuelo, who still holds my grandmother's hand down the supermarket aisle, slow dances on New Year's Eve with her. The stranger doesn't have a wife, a home. He doesn't watch TV like me and Abuelo, who lets me rest my head on his lap while he scratches my back, goosebumps days my body limp. He carries me to bed, kisses my forehead, and leaves me in the dark, goes back to the stranger the hall echoing with more bottles breaking, chairs smashing, women screaming, shots that won't let me sleep. Abuelo is nothing like that stranger, is he? <laughs>
As right. you're downplaying this, I'd like to remind you that you are indeed well, recognized. I mean, there, there are people that sort of say, like, oh, I've always wanted to be a writer since I was, you know, six months old, that kind of <laughs> stuff. And to me, I always say, well, everybody's journey is different. But to me, it was, a, it was, it was more like a, uh, a curiosity and a process. And it was more like, it was more like not the whirlwind, fall, you know, love affair, but rather the, a love affair where you like a good friend you've had for many years and suddenly you realize you're in love with them, you know, <laughs> that kind of, that's how I came to poetry. It wasn't like this overnight thing. And I think most things are like, you know, you work at them, you, you sort of try, you know, you test the waters, you get feedback, you, you start learning more and more and more. And sometimes you decide, you know, this isn't for me. And so sometimes you, kind of you continue. You or you grew on it, whichever it was. Well, yeah, and it just kind of just started happening you know one thing started led to another and led to another so so it was it was kind of like almost like a you know a, a dream too because here I am an engineer right and I wasn't doing it in terms of like I'm gonna be a writer I was just doing it sort of as a genuine sort of creative curiosity and I think that was actually a much healthier way to approach it rather than this pressure of like I'm going to be a writer, you know, and, you know, I went all through graduate school and I was still working as an engineer and I was still like, oh, I got this award now <laughs> they're going to publish my book. Oh, now, that's nice. <laughs> I'm hearing you correctly. You seem to find aesthetics in in the daily rituals, yeah. but uh, I, I, and I'm no expert, but I can tell you, I, I, I'm an avid reader, and I've thoroughly enjoyed what I read of you. Through the reading, there is there is a certain perception of, of pain, of, of need to heal. So, I, as as much as like to think that you know it's a mechanical process for you, and and, and that's how it, it occurred by accident, there, there there is this this true sense that you had some some matters that, that that I don't know if it was a trauma or it was a form of, of suffering, but but that there were things that you needed to sort out. Would you say that this is relatively accurate? And can you give us a little bit? insight as to sentimentally what what yeah please well um i guess i've always been attracted to that sense of sad beauty um that melancholy i don't know if that's partly cultural uh, melancholy you know <laughs> melancholia you know like that that sort of tragic comedy uh, tragic comedy that is to be cuban right um but i think just growing up uh and i think what you might be sensing is just growing around up and being a sensitive kid around uh, a whole family and a community that was Miami, you know, when I was growing up, that that sense of pain and loss was pervasive. It's still here, you know. There's, it's been a lot more years now, so there's maybe been more healing. But I kind of always picked that up when I was a kid. And so when you when I write about the characters in there, like, you know, I think I I am trying to convey that that sense of that loss, that that sense of memory that. Not quite nostalgia, and you know the the sort of the the figurehead of that is my mother who left uh, who left Cuba, who left her entire eight brothers and sisters, every cousin, every aunt, every nobody, to follow my father um, and come to the United States. So, yeah, and you hear all these stories. No, there was no, they didn't know if they were ever going to be able to go back, ever. So, and as you're growing up and hearing these stories and so and so, and like, and what happened the other day, and they hear that somebody died, like, like, I mean, there's a lot of sort of pain underneath and everywhere in everybody's faces and their eyes. Um, even though there was drinking and dancing and all that too, there was always this sort of melancholy that, that I sensed. And I think either I was born like that too naturally or that just, that just it, it sort of affected me a lot. And so I think when I, even when I write about subjects that aren't uh, the Cuban exile or my family, there is that sort of, sort of sad beauty that I'm always looking for and that, and that melancholy that I carry with me like wherever I go and, and that sense of still trying to find home, of still trying to, to, be, to, to have a place that is mine and all mine, you know. <laughs> that there, there's a certain, yeah, sadness that, that's where you get the looking for the golf motel.